Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Modernizing Infrastructure Monitoring and Management with AI Ops. Let's get started. So welcome. Uh, this is Darren Cunningham, Vice President of Marketing at OpsRamp. I'm here with, with Kurt Thorne, our solution strategist, uh, who is going to be spending a significant amount of time with you all diving into the OpsRamp platform. So the agenda that we put together for you, um, first and foremost, we wanted to talk about our perspective on this um, this really hot uh, buzzword, hot term called AI ops, AI for digital and IT operations management. Um, so we'll talk about that, but the bulk of the time today we'll be actually showing you um, how OpsRamp works, how we think about it in, in you know, through the software that we deliver. Um, we do, I do wanna give a, a shout out here. We, we will be announcing a couple of winners later in the webinar. So I encourage you to stay, stay on and stay tuned and, um, could be a good outcome for you, um, but also want to keep it interactive. So if you have questions, please use the chat panels and um, we'll have a, a, a live Q&A uh, after the demonstration or during the demonstration if you, uh, if you want to you know, dive right into what Kurt's showing. So AI, there's no shortage of hype around artificial intelligence in 2019. I actually, just yesterday, I did a quick search to see what the headlines are for this week. And you can see it's everything from you know the rising needs of, of uh, for power to AI powered text generators to uh, you know which superpower is going to lead the world in AI by 2030. So these are just yesterday's headlines on the topic of, of artificial intelligence. Now specifically on AI in the world of technology, Gartner talks a lot about AI as both hot and hyped. Now they have their hype cycle for artificial intelligence, um, and I, you know I like their recommendation which is to focus on practical uses for AI that will have immediate impact as the technology goes through the cycle. And their, their hype cycles, um, if you haven't seen them before, they start with innovation, they go through uh, to the peak of inflated expectations, through the trough of disillusionment over to enlightenment and productivity. So the other interesting um, fact I thought I was uh, looking at this hype cycle, the percentage of enterprises that have deployed AI has grown from 4% in 2018 to 14% in 2019, according to the an annual CIO survey. So it's a near quadrupling and indicates that AI is already delivering results. So let's, let's look at AI for digital and IT operations. We recently published a guide to AI ops on the OpsRamp website. You can see the URL here. And we really wanted to look at the market. We wanted to provide some information about the different vendors because there's different approaches that have emerged. Um, and we wanted to talk about the use cases as well as point to OpsRamp's view on AI ops. So I encourage you to, to have a look at our guide to everything AI ops. And, you know, really what we, what we, when you think about the definition, um, try to capture it here. AI ops leverages a broad set of technology platform approaches, including machine learning, network science, um, combinatorial optimization and other comp computational approaches for solving everyday IT operations uh, problems at scale. So, you know, sim simplifying that uh, a little further down, you know, ultimately AI ops is, is helping enterprise IT teams move away from siloed IT management activities to a more dynamic environment, which is gonna help them prevent service outages, analyze real-time incidents, really using intelligent alerting and alert correlation to fix problems using auto remediation and root cause analysis. So there's a quote here from um, Jenna Kiram that I liked in a really good article um, called Five Ways AI Ops Will Influence Enterprise IT Operations. And, and what he says is AI Ops, which is really the convergence of AI and IT operations, will change the face of infrastructure management. This technology will impact both enterprise data center and cloud infrastructure management. So very real, very much um, on the idea of change and how to deal with the increasing complexity in the distributed and increasingly hybrid environment that we're all living within uh, in 2019 and beyond. So for those of you who, um, who are less familiar with, with OpsRamp, I wanted to you know, introduce the company as well as share a little bit of our, our perspective on AI Ops right now. So we've, we've kind of level set on the definition you know, what is AI ops? Uh, how are people thinking about it? What is the really the holy grail that this we think will will help in terms of efficiency and productivity? Um, but really, you know, what we want to think about is, and what we've seen when we talk to our customers is that to do this right, 
to really get maximum value and, and really increase the time to value, to do this right, you need to have the right data. And that breaks down into these three or four different areas. So first and foremost, and you'll see this in the, in the demonstration, we believe that you know, ultimately uh, data quality, to really get the, the control you need, you have to have native instrumentation. And, and you're gonna see you know, why that is when we go into the, uh, into the demonstration. So there's four things to think about you know, in terms of data quality. Unless you can control the IT event data quality and formats at the source, you're going to end up with suboptimal pattern recognition and, and detection outcomes. It just, just makes sense, right? So this ability to tune the algorithms based on the signal and having that signal natively uh, you know, from the machine learning and, and AI uh, technology vendor makes, just makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, you're sort of at, at trying to figure out all this data and where a lot of the problems have, have uh, emerged with these sort of 1.0 point tools in this, in this category have been, you know, the promise is interesting, the potential might be there, but the reality is, inc is incredibly difficult if you're relying on all this disparate data coming in from uh, existing monitoring tools and different sources that you don't know about in advance. So the second is you have to truly be able to understand impact analysis for faster troubleshooting, right? So, so to make sense of an event and to know how to fix it, you need to understand its service context. Otherwise, you can't prioritize one, one incident over the other. And so much of this is be able to uh, quickly get to impact, quickly get to outcome. And how do you accelerate that um, with the right technology, the right solution? The third is incident resolution with relevant metrics, right? So how do you resolve an issue once you've performed event correlation? So AI ops tools without native in instrumentation can only address a slice of the incident management puzzle without access to performance monitoring metric data. And then the, the finally, you know, where we want to get to, where we see this going is in auto remediation. And standalone AI ops tools are going to lack that sort of self-healing operational workflows built into the system that can fix issues without human intervention, which is clearly one of the objectives. So let's step back before we dive into the technology and just quickly introduce OpsRAM. So one of our, you know, when we think about our mission, when we talk about our, to our customers and partners, they're dealing with really tool sprawl, right? They have too many tools. Um, and, and in many cases, they're looking to you know, eliminate what they call swivel chair IT operations management. So our mission is to end that with a service-centric AI ops technology platform. And what this means for you is that you know, we want to help you achieve your goal in IT operations management of being the first to know, right? giving you visibility across your hybrid infrastructure, not just visibility across you know, what's happening in the data center or using other technologies to look at the cloud, giving you that complete picture. The second is be able to take action faster with context and insight. You know, the key metrics we talk to our customers about and you're all looking at measuring is how to reduce your mean time to detection and mean time to resolution. And then we have a vision of helping our customers and partners run IT organizations as a service, right? Be closer to the business, closer to the customers, ultimately reducing costs and eliminating some of these uh, legacy uh, and, and, and tools that might have made sense in the, in the you know, on-prem only era that really don't make sense in today's hybrid uh, environments. And we do this through one platform, and you'll see this in Kurt's demonstration of bringing together hybrid infrastructure monitoring with intelligent incident escalation management, ultimately delivering this vision of a digital operations command center, all powered by machine learning AI at the core, a SaaS platform that can integrate with disparate monitoring tools and deliver native instrumentation as well as integrate with uh, IT service management technologies like ServiceNow, for which we are a certified uh, integration partner. And then finally, as we go through the demonstration, you'll hear Kurt talk about you know, one of you know, really three things. One is, is providing the visibility you need, then layering in the intelligence by you know, delivering on the machine learning and AI core to the technology platform, and then ultimately helping our customers and partners really automate and, and deliver more of an optimized uh, IT infrastructure. So that's a quick intro to you know, some of our thinking on AI, AI ops, and kind of introducing you to OpsRAM. I'm gonna hand it over to Kurt to really show you what this means and, and show you how we're delivering on this promise and where we're going with uh, the OpsRAM platform. So 
I know today's focus is about how, how OpsRamp delivers its visionary uh, approach to AI ops, but I think that before we get into uh, taking a look at uh, the AI ops, we need to take a look and step back at the foundational aspects of really um, what OpsRamp is. So as Darren was saying, there's much more to uh, OpsRamp than AI ops. That's just part of the functionality that we deliver and the foundations of what OpsRamp is at its heart really builds into that. It makes it very easy and quick to get up and running and seeing the results of AI ops. Um, first and foremost, OpsRamp is a hybrid um, monitoring solution. That means that no matter what you have, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, whether it's a virtual storage compute, OpsRamp is gonna go out and discover this easily onboarded and start to manage and give you real-time insight into the performance and health of these resources and services that you're delivering. Here on this dashboard, we can see that I've gone out and I've discovered some of my AWS uh, uh, resources that I've got out here for Windows resources. I can see CPU utilization, memory utilization, and for some Linux. But we can really go out and start to monitor everything, uh, whether it's going to be, you know, or databases. Here I have some cloud Oracle instances I'm monitoring. Uh, or over here, we can even start to tie these together into things like Kubernetes and containers for those folks who are working in the DevOps and getting really nimble. Um, this is one of those things that a lot of people are just starting to look at, but over the next couple of years, uh, it's going to be coming on, you know, hard and heavy for people as they get adopted into organizations. So it's good to have a technology that's ready to go there when you are. Um, but the key about this is providing visibility, gathering all these metrics and these insights, and then being able to tie them to things like a business service. So here what I have on my dashboard is a service-centric view of all that infrastructure and those resources that we've discovered coming together to deliver an HR service, an enterprise ERP service, and portal services. I'm tying these together with synthetic monitoring, the underlying databases, the network infrastructure that's coming together to get insight. We're monitoring all of this natively. And that gives us context because everything's speaking the same language and coming into a single console where we can start to drive that AI ops that we're going to be looking at a little bit later. I can see that I've got an inner issue with my ERP, so we can go ahead and drill right into this uh, to start to see how we've represented this in our service map and to see where the issue is. Now here is my view of my uh, ERP service map. I can collapse a couple of these things here to get it all into one screen. But these are different pieces of the services that are coming together to deliver uh, my ERP. And I can expand this and get right down to see, oh, I've got a problem with my SQL cluster that's driving a component behind the scenes and my SQL cluster. And I can drill into this to be able to start to see what's going on. I've actually got five alerts here. I've got five tickets that I've gone out and I've generated and opened up in my uh, service management solution. In this case, it's ServiceNow. I'll show you where we do that with an alert a little bit. But really gaining that visibility and tying it back to the business services that we're delivering. Now, this is just one component of it, but really at its heart, like I said, we're monitoring and pretty much everything in the tech stack on premise or in the cloud. We can get a good look at that on this screen. Of all the screens in OpsRamp, this one tells the best story about what we do. Um, and this is just a subset of the things that we monitor and discover. And we can see here that on, in a single interface, a single native platform with our agent and agentless instrumentation, we're not depending on third parties for this. We're going out and we're discovering and managing and monitoring AWS, GCP, Azure. I've got my Kubernetes and containers out here, servers I'm managing, network devices, all within a single console. So when you start to think about this, one aspect of having a single platform come and deliver this and bring it together is instead of having a tool for you know, monitoring network, a tool for monitoring applications, a tool for monitoring you know, my cloud and trying to somehow bring all those events into a single place, tweak them with JavaScript and code, and then write rules and tune an algorithm in a separate database and, and then hope that you get enough information out of there after all that work to be able to generate tickets or drive some sort of automation, we've pretty much taken care of that for you. Everything's speaking the same language, coming into a single console, and makes it very easy for us to apply our special brand of AI and machine learning to it. And we'll see that as we get into it. Um, but really key to point out here, the level that we're monitoring this is key. Uh, I'll just drill into a couple of servers here and give you an idea. So I can drill into uh, my Windows servers. We've discovered, uh, I can see that I've got apps out here we're doing a lot of control over these. So I can come in here and start to see attributes. I can see this guy's been down here for a while. Um, I can also see that we've picked up the SQL servers installed. 
As I said, I showed you a little bit on our dashboard about Oracle, but we're also monitoring, gathering those events from the applications that are on here, like SQL Server for performance, query time. We could set thresholds and alerts around those events and start to correlate them with the servers and upstream and downstream with context that we'll add uh, through our discovery. We also are able to grab metrics about this, how we're performing, uh, different resources, memory utilization. All these are being fed back into our single repository. Now, it's worth pointing out, too, that it's not just for our servers. Uh, network devices in the same interface, in the same context. I don't have to go to another tool to look at my network device health. I can just come down and look at one of my routers or switches. I can start to see everything on the attributes, the inventory, the interfaces that we have out here, and start to see all the information that we're collecting here uh, around this. Again, it's all feeding back in the same language up into the same uh, repository in the data lake that we're going to mine later, uh, not just to drive policies and remediations, but to give insight to suggest root cause to where those issues uh, are actually occurring in the first place that somebody should look. Network storage. Um, all of it in the same place. So really, when it comes down to it, a lot of folks find that they can replace some legacy tools that they've had out here for monitoring or that just aren't cutting in in today's hybrid and cloud-centric world uh, with OpsRamp because we've got a single place to be able to discover, manage all of these resources, uh, whether it's AWS, Azure, GCP, uh, you name it. So a lot of power here. But besides just discovering and monitoring, and being able to group these into business services, what we also do is we do some discovery about the context of the resources that we're finding out here. And we can start to see that through our topology browser. So I'm gonna pop over here into my topology and we can see that we do some application discovery, a list of all these cloud and uh, serverless computing, but let's take a look at my HA proxy. And I can see that I've got a couple of HA proxy servers out here. And we've actually discovered, you know, we've got some HA proxy servers connected to a Tomcat, connected to some server resources behind. And I can even blow this out to get an even more detailed list. Now, this is nice, but we're not discovering this to populate a CMDB. And we can populate a CMDB. We have tight integrations with all the leading service management solutions like ServiceNow to be able to update and keep resources and CIs up to date, open ticket, change orders over there. But we're using this because this is a foundational context about how the applications are talking and how they're related for the, that we use in our AI ops. Uh, another place where we use this very commonly is, is in the network. So if I come out here and I take a look at one of my switches, we've actually gone out and we've discovered uh, the network connections that are sitting behind this. So it makes it easy instead of like trying to work between, okay, I've had ServiceNow, ServiceWatch go out and discover uh, all the applications, and then I've had you know their network discovery go out and discover relationships, and we're gonna feed all those into a third-party tool and hope that it does those correlations correctly on the information coming from other tools that we're depending on that are third-party for monitoring. We're doing all of this contextual discovery about the topology and the monitoring in a single platform that understands all the environments natively. So that means that when we start to do things like uh, topological correlation on the inference, we've discovered the relationships so that we know when we start receiving alerts from everything, well, it's because this core switches down. And so that we can deduplicate these and correlate all the alerts coming from these resources behind the switch and then point operations users to this switch to say, this is probably the first place that you should look to fix that problem. Now what we do in addition to the application and to the network is we also do cloud discovery. So if I look at my AWS, I could come out here and start to get a little bit more insight into how these relationships look out here. So if I go, hey, show me all my RDS instances, I can come out and get a visual representation of what's going on in the cloud. And again, the same topology is coming into play uh, for AI ops at its heart. So we're getting the information, standard set, standard language makes it easy to start to get benefits, but we're also getting the context around the resources and how they're related uh, to be able to get true insight into what's happening in the environment to start correlating and, and suggesting those RCAs. Now, before we go and take a look at this, let's see how this looks like through an alert browser. So I'm gonna switch over here and we'll take a look at my alert browser 
And there's really not too much you can do with one of these. They've been around for 20, 30 years, as long as I've been in the industry. And you've always got your red for critical warnings, yellows for, for warnings, green for okay. Uh, informational, we have as blue. Um, but you've got your alert message, your metric, what the resources that's having an issue, IP address, all that good stuff. Um, but what we've added are two columns to this. Uh, that really demonstrate the value of where OpsRamp is, is leading the industry. Uh, repeated alerts. This is essentially filtering out that noise. So every time you pull a device, you know, you're getting an alert event message, oh, I'm okay, oh, I'm okay, oh, I'm broken now, or I'm in a warning state. A lot of times these tools are, these are just going to stack up and add the noise that operations folks have to sift through to try to figure out what's going on. Well, just natively, OpsRamp is going to know, oh, this device, had one occurrence of this, but then everything else that happened after that because it never healed, well, we're not gonna create separate events and line items and trigger notifications and emails to people. We're just gonna tack those onto that primary first alert until this heals again. So we're not gonna flood everybody's inboxes or, or, or drown them in noise. We're gonna really consolidate and deduplicate these events. Now, what we've also done is you'll notice this little box right here on the side. This is actually where we've correlated other alerts that came into the system. And because we speaking the same language, because we understand the context and topology, we have know that these 49 alerts are actually caused by this single event or the single alert that we need to be aware of. So it gives us a good insight and a good place to start. Now, no technology is perfect, but a lot of the time this is going to save your operations folks um, effort to be able to give them a place to go look and say, is this the first place, the, is this where something's broke that we need to take a look at? And you can see here that we've already created an incident that correlated off into ServiceNow, uh, associated the resource in the CMDB that we're creating and updating and keeping everything tightly knit together. So the real question that we get is how do we do this? Well, before we take a look at how easy it is to configure this, let's take a look at how we see the alert life cycle in OpsRamp. So, the first thing that we do is there's an alert generation. So our native instrumentation, our agent lists, our SSH, our API integrations for monitoring, we're gonna bring those all in and they're all speaking the same language so we can do our own monitoring. Now, a lot of times people have existing investments or they have specialized tools for things um, that they, they wanna hang on to. And we're not opposed to that. We want to enhance through integration uh, the customer's uh, environment. So we can also take in and ingest third-party uh, events and alerts through webhooks and REST API. And after we ingest those, whether it's ours or a third party, we actually normalize that data. So we're going to ingest it, normalize it, uh, and start to make sure everything's speaking the same language. And then once we do that, we start to apply our inference algorithms or inference models to start to correlate and deduplicate all that noise to give insight. Next after that, we're gonna do some things that we term as first response. Now I'll take you through a couple of these today, but one of those is automatic incident suppression. Maybe there are times when you don't care to see some events because you know about them or maybe they're in a dev or QA environment so you just don't want that noise. We can automatically suppress those for you. We can execute a runbook automation script in the background to remediate that and try to fix it or do a root cause analysis uh, again using that topology to say hey this is the first place you should look is that edge router uh, for everything behind it that's also uh, throwing alerts. After that, if first response doesn't do anything or if we need to go to the next level, we can trigger escalations and notifications. So OpsRamp actually has a native uh, SMS, voice calling, an email notification uh, tool in with on-call rotations and shifts so that we can take care of that uh, natively inside of OpsRamp. We can also go out and generate uh, incidents in third-party systems like a ServiceNow or a ShareWell or a BMC to be able to maximize uh, the benefit that we get out of there and still keep that audit trail uh, in the service management solution. Now, what's key about this, and because we are talking about AI ops, is that those last three areas, AI comes into play in all of them. And I'll take you through that today, uh, where we start to do the correlation and that first response and escalation, and how we're starting to use AI a little bit out of that traditional event correlation uh, and pattern matching. So let's dig in and take a look at that right now. So I'm gonna go over into my administration console, where we set up our inference models. And we have these under service level mop management. 
So I'm going to come in and take a look at an inference model. And I've got a few set up here. We generally start with, you know, a, a few, and then uh, customers will go and tweak them for their environment and working with our specialists. But I can see that we can set these into on, off, or observe key about this is a lot of folks are going to take and do an iterative process to refine this as they start to go through and get exactly the information that they need to out of it. So you don't need to turn on the AI apps if you're not ready for it or you're not sure about the results that you're going to get. You can put these into observe mode to start to get visibility about what the system's going to do with it uh, when we start to get it. But it's really easy to go in and start to set these up. Uh, versus a lot of other tools out there. So I'll just come on here and say a new uh, policy or new inference model. I can set to where I want this to go. We do have a tenant-based model, so if I wanted to do uh, different tenants or business units, I could associate them there. Um, but I'll say, you know what, we're gonna put this into an observed mode, and then I can, if I want to, set different filter criteria out here from customer native attributes, really kind of anything that we're collecting in the system um, to start to filter down the alerts that we wanna look at. We're just gonna do a catch-all on this one, so we'll turn this off. The first one that most people do, and that we highly recommend, is just doing basic co-occurrence on correlation. This is full machine learning where we let the system look at the data that we're collecting and then start to look for those patterns of the events that come in and the alerts and start to see where those are and correlate them together so that you end up with a situation like we were seeing uh, in my alert browser where we can start to correlate different alerts, tie them together into a primary alert, and then start to notify on that and give uh, people a place to hit the ground running to, to fix the issues. Now, what's great about this is that you have the ability to train this. If you know co-occurrence patterns, maybe you're just bringing this up for the first time and you know that you, there are some patterns that are already out there, you can upload those easily and let it go and uh, the system will learn that at, uh, from the, your training model in CSV format. And you notice I have a checkbox here for continuous learning. If I check this on, that means that the system is gonna ongoing basis continuously retrain itself with new information and new patterns as they come in to try to identify, you know, maybe there's something you didn't know about or that wasn't common or just started happening in the last week or two. Um, the system is gonna identify those and train itself on that model. Um, so this is where you go all in, turn on the machine learning and start to get some of that correlation. You'll notice I haven't done any parsing. I haven't really kind of done JavaScript or tuning an algorithm or a database out there. I don't need a data scientist to do this. This is really an operator focused uh, type of interface to make it as easy as possible to get results with as little maintenance as possible in the long term. AI apps didn't always stand for artificial intelligence. It originally standed for algorithmic IT operations. We still have that model based in here where you look at a slice of time and then you look at attributes of all the events and the alerts are coming in and then you can start to group them based on how similar they are. Uh, you know, is it matching, is it not? And I can add different uh, criteria to this to really tune it and make it what I need it to be. And then last but not least, we can start to tie these all together and correlate uh, on our topology that we've discovered. So when we look at the co-occurrence or we look at uh, just a top topology or topological uh, approach, we can start to say, based on what we've discovered upstream and downstream, based on how the applications are talking, based on how uh, things are talking to each other in the cloud, let's start to use that as an input into um, how we're gonna correlate all these alerts together. A lot of power here in a very simple interface. Uh, and that's why people really love OpsRamp when they get down to it because they don't need to, you know, go to back to school to learn to be a data scientist to start getting events uh, or, or value out of the events that they're getting in. Now, we'll talk about a couple of different other areas where we are using AI apps and machine learning. One of those is first response. Uh, to kind of talk about this, I'm gonna go back to our slides here and I've got a slide teed up. Now, first response is really what we call auto-suppression. And we have two types of auto-suppression. We can say, let's suppress based on an attribute. Like, if show me everything that's in this subnet, or if it's got a label that says it's dev, well, then suppress all those events because I don't want to flood my production stream with that and confuse people and, and just make it more confusing. The other thing that we have is we can actually do seasonality suppression, where we can learn events as they occur in specific patterns at specific times and start to suppress those because you know about them already. They're expected. Um, so 
in one example here that I've got teed up here, and this is a perfect one we see, like nightly backups uh, might spike the server's uh, memory CPU overnight from like 12 to 2 a.m. Uh, or that in a case like this that I have on, on the graph, you bring down your cloud or your virtual machines over the weekend to save money. Um, so that we can see here that on Saturdays, Friday nights at six, I shut these off to so Saturdays and Sundays, I have a pretty consistent number of alerts. These resources aren't there, they're checking in. Well, each one of these color-coded bars stands for a week. So once we start to build up enough data in the data lake, we can start to identify those trends. And the first thing that the system is gonna see is, you know what, we have this reoccurring pattern that we have these machines that are always on Saturdays and Sundays, they're offline, they're throwing the same number of events. The, the AI and machine learning is gonna identify that first. The next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna look for the time for that. Is there a similarity in the time that these are happening every week? And it's gonna go, ah, it's Saturday, Sunday, or it's nightly, or it's every last week of the month. Whatever that is, the system is gonna identify that pattern of alerts. And then it's gonna cancel out that noise. So it will automatically suppress these alerts and these uh, notifications that would naturally come from these uh, these events so you don't get you know flooded with you know emails in your inbox over the weekend just because the VMs are down. Now the great thing about this too that we've built into it is that because we have a historical context and on how long these events or situations should last or outages or whatever, whatever they may be, is that if something goes past that historical window, we're gonna unsuppress that event and then start back up the notification and escalation hierarchy paths that you set up. So that's to make sure that nothing gets automatically suppressed and then forgotten. We're gonna make sure that you're aware of that uh, if it goes past what the system thinks is uh, the, the historical average or time for that. So really a nice way to be able to catch it. Now you'd think something like this would be pretty complex to set up, but in actuality, we can do this by going into our first response. And if I wanna add a brand new model, we'll say uh, seasonality, turn it on or off or observe mode. I can put filters on this just like I could with my other inference rules, but I just check here, time-based seasonal alerts. This tells the machine learning to go out in the AI to start mining all that data, look at it comes in, start to find those patterns and then automatically start suppressing those alerts. You don't have to go out and tune anything or do any you know, JavaScripting again for this. Very easy to do. Attribute-based, if I were gonna suppress these based on attributes of a resource, I just upload a small spreadsheet that has the attributes of the resources I wanna automatically suppress. Makes it very easy. Again, and at the end, I can go, hey, let's go ahead and continuous learning. So if new attributes or new things come into play that we want to suppress, let's go ahead and automatically suppress those. Very easy to get the value out of here without being a, a rocket scientist. Now, last but not least, uh, we are starting to use the AI and machine learning outside of the traditional events and alert suppression or notification. We're using these actually alert uh, escalation. So what an alert escalation policy is, is we can go in here and we can start to set up, you know, I want to have resources and I want to get an email or I want to notify a team that's on shift. Um, I've gone out here and I've set up one for my resources and I can see that I'm going to trigger an alert notification to, to some folks when I get a critical and it occurs more than five times within an hour. This is a great feature that we have. So you can say, you know, if it happens more than four times in 30 minutes, let me know. But if it happens three times in 30 minutes, I don't care because I expect that. Um, and then I'm saying here, you know, if it happens greater than five times in an hour and it's a network, I want to trigger an escalation notification path to a team, an individual, open a ticket, you name it. So I'm going to put this into edit mode and show you where we're using some of this AI in, in the non-traditional ways to start to get maximized some benefits. So I'm going to edit my notification path. So we can see here that when, uh, when those criteria are met and I want to trigger a notification, the first thing I do is I immediately go out and I'm going to send a notification out to users. I can send this out to teams, on-call lists that I might have out here, different shift uh, rosters, and let people know. Well, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wait one minute and then I'm going to generate an incident. Now, this incident, I can tailor the message and attributes that go out to it. But I might say that, oh, I want this 
network issue to go off to the NOC every time. And I can set any of these attributes out here, you know, priority, all this good stuff. But you'll notice that uh, I have a checkbox over here. And that's because this might go to the NOC, and that's going to generate a, a ticket inside our service management tool. Now, a key thing about this is with ServiceNow or anything else, we have a bi-directional integration. So we'll open up that ticket and we'll assign it to the NOC. But what if it gets to the NOC and the NOC's like, well, this isn't really for us. This is for the operations team. Then the operations team's go, well, this really isn't us. This is a database issue, so let's send it off to the Windows team. So a ticket gets shuffled around two, three times before it gets resolved. Well, all those updates on the shuffling are coming back into OpsRAM. So what we can actually do is with this checkbox for learn configuration, I can turn this on, and we're gonna get those updates and we're gonna start to learn, oh, this type of event and error came in and instead of going to the NOC, it actually ended up at the Windows team. The system's gonna learn that that's where it should automatically start to send those types of event tickets. You can do that for any of these attributes with the checkbox and you can even do it for the entire incident itself where you can come up here and say, just keep on learning as time goes by. And if that escalation pattern over when it gets into the ticketing system changes in ServiceNow or, or ShareWell or BMC, well then let's update it on our side automatically and let's learn from that behavior to make sure that we're not spending time juggling things around and, and throwing them over the wall of the other teams. But we make sure that those incidents and alerts get to the right teams and, you know, on the first try so that they can go out, restore that service and hit the ground running to know where they have to go to fix that. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight into how we're approaching IOPS, why I said at the beginning that this was a visionary approach, uh, and where we're starting to use this outside of just the traditional uh, models for you know, correlating events together. So I guess with that, Darren, I'll hand it back to you. Thanks, Greg. Great, great overview as always. Um, uh, I think you've hit some of these already. Um, but what, what one question is, what's the typical time for ops ramp uh, time to value specifically around uh, some of the machine learning? You know, what, what are some of the benefits and what's the time to value value you've seen with customers? Yeah, so um, the, the answer is always it varies, but it's not atypical for people to start seeing results in the first week or two. Um, I mean, because natively we're doing that deep duplication right out of the gate, right? So that's saving people a lot of noise and a lot of benefit. But then also with the correlation rules and how we can start to set those up and really start to filter the noise and tie them together, um, we can give you some basic benefits uh, in the first week or two, but those are only going to get better over time. As the data lake gets better, as there's more uh, information out there um, for, for users to, or for the system to mine, uh, to get that insight, it's going to grow over time. Um, like I said, we, we've seen customers benefit in one week and then definitely have a, a great benefit by the end of the month. But again, that all really kind of depends on the data that's coming in. Okay, cool. Um, another, another question is, the um, what tools does OpsRamp typically replace, typically monitoring tools? Yeah, I mean... Typically those legacy tools that folks have out there for monitoring, SolarWinds isn't atypical, uh, NIMSoft or whatever CA is calling it nowadays, uh, those types of tools um, that folks have been monitoring their, their infrastructure with. Because we have that broad swath, and I'll, I'll bring it back up here for everything that we monitor, there's a lot of tools that are just kind of, you know, they've, they've been on cruise control for a while and people are finding that, they're not there for the, the new emerging technologies or for their cloud posture that they're going to. Um, those are the types of tools that uh, they've been around for five, 10 years that uh, are absolutely perfect uh, fits for replacement. Awesome. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, when we talk to customers, there's often this conversation about uh, integrate to consolidate. So we'll look at what you already have, uh, and we've actually built a pretty comprehensive ROI calculator to help you um, think through that. Which ones can we come in and help you move all away from, and which ones can we integrate with, uh, bring those events into OpsRamp, and really get the value of uh, what you've seen in today's demo. Um, so just in terms of just you know, what we went through, Kurt talked about the visibility, intelligence, optimization capabilities of the platform. We talked about kind of our point of view on AI and AI ops. All right, well, um, just to, to wrap up the, you know, recommended next steps, I uh, want to remind you all of the AI ops guide we have on our website, and you can see the URL here. We'll send you the presentation and the recording um, um, after the webinar. 
So here are the webinar winner slide. Uh, next steps. So read the read the guide to AI Ops, um, and you can see the URL here on the screen. Uh, register for a custom Ops Ramp demonstration, and you can do that on our website. And um, a couple other useful resources just to be aware of. We have a um, state of AI Ops report where we did a survey uh, and, and really you know, found out what, what's on the mind of, of enterprise VPs, directors of infrastructure operations uh, and management and got their feedback on, on where things are in, in, in reality in terms of AI and AI Ops. And then we have our cost saving calculator, calculator that I mentioned. So with that, I want to uh, thank Kurt for a great demonstration. Thank everyone for attending, and we look forward to um, connecting with you and helping you control the chaos with the Ops Ramp platform. Thanks for joining.